Buenas, buenas. Welcome to Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to record audio inside FL Studio 20. Now, we're going to be looking at recording mono and stereo audio, and then we're going to learn how to edit audio inside of the playlist. And then we're going to be looking a little bit more into advanced stuff, uh, just a little bit so we can understand how fully fledged FL Studio's audio capabilities are. So at the very end, we're going to touch a little bit on Edison, which is FL Studio's spectral editor. And we're also going to cover a little bit of Newtone, which is FL Studio's built-in pitch editor. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is set up our audio interface. So let's go to Options. Under Audio Settings, we'll find our device input and output. So here I'm going to select the UMC ACO driver. Now you're going to select the proper driver for your uh, purpose. Here you can select your sample rate. And over here you can select the buffer length, which is very important when you're recording. Uh, for example, if you're recording uh, vocalists, you're going to want to lower your buffer size so that they don't hear any delay in their headphones. So you're going to lower it to 64 or to 124 samples. If you're mixing, you probably want to increase your sample buffer so your computer has more time to calculate certain processes. Uh, so I'm going to click on 512 in my case. Now let's set up our mixer track. So right here you'll see that my mixer track number three has an input on top and then an output at the bottom as on my other tracks inside of the studio. So up here I'm going to select my input to be three and four which is my stereo input and if I play back this loop right here you're going to hear a kick in a snare drum. Now let's say if I wanted to make this mono, I'll go down here to the mono inputs. I'll select input three, and now my input signal is in mono. This is very important because, for example, if you're recording kick drums or recording vocals, you do not want to kick uh, click stereo because either you're only going to get uh, a left channel inside here, or you're going to have something that's uneven in your field. Now let's say I go back to three and four and perhaps I don't have the proper settings. Well, my gear is so old that it doesn't have a proper leveling, which is in this case true. You'll notice that my one of my channels, the left one is a little bit louder than my right one. Now let's say this was a little bit more extreme. You're not gonna get a good mono signal if you're recording in, uh, in stereo. So let's make sure that we switch that back over to input three and bam, we make sure that our kicks and our snares are rock solid to center. All right, so now that we know when to record mono or stereo, let's uh, link our mixer track to our playlist track. So the way I do this is I go to my playlist track, I right click on it, select track mode, select audio track, and I'll select audio insert three. Uh, in FL Studio, the mixer tracks are called inserts. Don't worry, they're just, they're just mixer tracks, so nothing to worry about. Now I'm going to right click to rename this and call it drums. Click on here and give it a color, make it orange, press enter. And now you'll see that both the playlist track and the mixer track are in sync. Now the next thing I have to do is record arm. For the most part, Apple Studio does a pretty good uh, job at auto arming once you select an input. Uh, the next thing we have to do is press R to enable recording. So right here I have the record button. If I right click on it, I can select if I want to record automation notes or audio, in this case, I'm going to right click to select audio. And, and once I press play, I'll start recording. Um, if I was recording a singer, I'd want to count them in over here. So there's a countdown before recording. If you right click on it, you get the option to uh, pre count one bar in or two bars in. You also have the option to, uh, to have a metronome uh, on while it's recording. In this case, since I'm recording a drum machine, I'm going to turn both of them off. And I'm going to count myself in. Slow down, you go too fast, love. I'm telling slow down, I can't keep up, love. Your heart is shrinking faster and big. All right, that's enough for the drum machine. I can stop the drum machine playing. And you'll notice I kind of cut off part of that kick drum here. Don't worry, I can just press S and I can slide my audio to a clean kick drum. And if I zoom in and press Alt, I can do it all the way precisely to where the tech is perfectly set up. Then I press C to cut out the extra recording that I don't need. 
and now I should have. Oh, just to remind you guys, you have to press R to uh, stop recording. Then you can press Control Z if you accidentally record something you didn't you didn't want to record, and then you delete it. Press Control Z again to remove that extra track, which we'll get into a second. I'm gonna delete this guy again. All right, let's get into doing some basic audio editing. I can double click on the audio clip and this will open up the channel settings. From here, I'll have access to normalizing, reversing my audio, uh, swapping the stereo image. In this case, I don't have stereo, but I'll show you guys in a second. I also have a uh, cutoff. So if I want to remove the high end from, the, from those drums, I can do that inside here. I can also add resonance. RM, zero delay, check this out. And I can go send it to the other side. And now the left and the right channel will be delayed. Also have a, just a little bit of distortion. That is very loud, so I'm gonna lower the level in post. Uh, we also have the clicking mode, so we can do crossfades like that. I can select the clip, pressing control and then right clicking, dragging to select the clip. And then I can press control B to paste it. I'm just gonna make sure that it stays on beat. Press enter. Now I'm gonna record another take of this um, so we can pretend that we're punching in and out. So I'm just gonna mute these guys and then I'm gonna press control T to create a punching point. I'm going to I'm going to call this let's say punch and recording and then I'm going to do punch out at bar 9. You can press control T, right click on it and press punch out recording and now I'm going to switch our input to be in stereo. All right? Because my drums they're on the left and the right side of the signal. So I'm going to press R to start recording and then now I'm just going to press play and press play on my drum machine at the same time. And you notice that as soon as that punch out marker stopped, so did the recording. So this is a quick, a really cool way to actually start punching in and out. Let's say your vocalist uh, messed up just on a single line, make little uh, punch in and punch out points and then record in them. And then you'll see that not only do you get the, the new track created, but it'll be created in a little folder. So whenever you need to do vocal doubles or ad-libs, you can all keep them in the little folder really nicely organized. All right, so I'm gonna extend this little clip a little bit. Just make sure that it's at the very edge. All right, I'm gonna paste this clip over to the other section. So I'm gonna click on it and then I'm gonna press breed. It's like my brush tool. Now this tool is really cool. It lets you select any pattern or clip that you selected before and it lets you paste it. So for example, if I had a, this pattern over here, which was the, the one that only had the drum and the snare, I can quickly paste it throughout my track. I could also do this with the MIDI over here, and it's super easy. So the last thing you touch, you will be able to paste it quickly. All right, cool. I'm gonna press R to make sure I don't re-record anything back into my uh, playlist. And then I'm gonna press Enter to make this uh, track large. Now I mentioned earlier that crossfading is a little bit uh, different instead of Full Studio. You actually have to, um, have two clips on top of each other. And when you when you do this, you can select one of the clips, right click on it, and then select crossfade with. And in this case, I'll just select the other drums. And bam, I have a crossfade between the stereo drums I had and then the mono drums. So let's uh, hear that fade. Yeah, there's a little bit of face problems because the my stereo drums have not been pulled up all the way, so let's press S and drag them over. And now when they're fading, the fade should be a lot better. The cool thing about this, this uh, fade is that it almost functions like an automation. So if I come up here to the playlist, you'll see that there's a waveform view and there's uh, also a focus automation clips and there's also a focus pattern clips. So I'm gonna select focus automation clips and I'll have access to that crossfade and I can actually do some really crazy automation and crossfade in between both tracks.
All right, so now that we're done talking about the basics of audio recording and audio editing inside of FL Studio's uh, mixer and playlist, let's go ahead and open up some of the more advanced editors that people tend to look over but are very, very powerful. So I'm gonna press T to enable my vocal. Now I'm gonna double left click on it to open up the channel editor. I'm gonna right click on that waveform and select edits in the audio editor. And now check this out. It has open Edison. And you'll see here my, here's my vocals in a spectrum view. Slow down, you go too fast, love. I'm telling slow down, I can't keep up, love. Now, I can hear a couple little things. There's a little bit of hiss in the background. It's barely noticeable, but it's there. And there also, there's also some pulses in the lower range. You can actually see here clearly that there's a uh, pops and whatnot. So let's go ahead and zoom in on one of them. And faster and baby, there's no laughter and baby. So you can see that there's some information down there in the low end. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is denoise. So let's acquire noise profile. I'm going to select the last bit of this clip and I'm going to go to the brush tool, right click to acquire noise profile. And then I'm going to press control A to select the whole clip and press the, the brush tool again, left click on the brush tool to open up uh, the denoiser. So there's also a declipper and a declicker, but I have those turned off. I can click on the button right there to turn them on and off. And I'm gonna select the, the denoise, and I'm gonna increase the threshold a little bit and increase the amount. And you can also change the frequency scale just to see uh, how much you're removing. You can preview things. I'm gonna go ahead and select accept push it up the amount a little bit and then hit accept. And you'll see that has decreased the level of that, all that noise in the background. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is go to the, the equalizer, which is a linear phase EQ. It's this little uh, level thingy you see right here. Left click on it. And you'll see here that I by default have uh, it set to remove uh, certain frequencies. I'm gonna push it up a little bit higher to remove that those low, that, that, that low end that you don't need to know females vocals, I'm gonna select accept. And you see, got rid of some of that. I'm gonna do this again. Just push it a little bit higher and hit accept again. And bam, we got some rid of that, those pops and plosives. Let's play this back. And slow down, I can't keep up, love. Your heart is shrinking faster and baby, there's no laugh to this is amazing. Like this editor is included in a $200 piece of software. That's FL Studio. And a lot of people don't talk about this, but you have that included inside of FL Studio. So, I mean, you don't even have to run to RX. You can just use FL Studio and be pretty good for the most part. Uh, the D-Clicker works really wonderful. And the D-Clipper is amazing. Like I'm so surprised that a D-Clipper actually works inside a FL Studio. I mean, just, it's just the best bang for the buck you have for audio. All right, so now let's go take a look at the pitch editor. I'm gonna double click on the Vox and then right click on the waveform and select edit and pitch corrector. It's gonna open up new tone. It's gonna analyze the vocal and bam, I have the vocal opened up in a pitch corrector that's linked to FL Studio's playlist. This is fantastic. Um, I can zoom in and I can edit the vocal super quick. I can pitch them up, pitch them down. I can strain up the variation. So I can make it super auto tuny. Slow down, you go too fast, love. And it still sounds remarkably good for for a pitch editor that's included again inside Apple Studio, which is, I mean, such a big bang for your buck. I'm gonna increase the variation a little bit more again, just to make it not sound so robotic. Uh, you can center things around, and you can even change the timing on certain things. Slow down. So you can change time, man. I mean, people don't talk about this enough. Uh, we can go to the advanced settings and we can also change uh, some form and variation, some the how quickly things pitch down or how quickly things pitch up. We can change the volume on certain notes. Oh, hold on. If I click on this little bar on top, I can change the, the volume. I can change the variation on individual notes. I mean, overall, we have a very powerful editor and I mean, people don't talk about this enough. So yeah, I wanted to cover that inside of this video. Let's change this guy right here just so you can listen to the algorithm. 
I'm going to drop the variation so it doesn't sound too crazy. Slow down. All right, folks, so that's it for this video. Today, we learned how to record inside of Apple Studio, whether we should record in mono or stereo. We also learned how to edit those recordings inside of Apple Studio's playlist. So we learned how to cut things, how to fade things together. And we took some baby steps and looked into uh, FL Studio's Edison, which is a spectral editor, and New Tone, which is FL Studio's pitch editor. This is such a great package for $200, $300. You can't really complain about FL Studio because it's just so jam-packed with features. Oh, we also took a look at punching in, which I think is great. Punching in and grouping is fantastic in FL Studio. Recording now is so much simpler and even in some cases I would say better than other programs. This is it for today folks. I hope you guys learned something new that you guys enjoyed this video. Please give us a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this and share with your friends. I'm Kevin Ochoa with Music Marketing TV and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Yeah.